Hello and welcome to P's and G's Online. Wherever you're joining us uh, at the moment, whether it's in Edinburgh or different parts of Scotland, uh, then a very warm welcome to you. I don't know how your week has been, whether it's been a good week or a bad week. Uh, over the last two or three weeks, we've prayed a lot in our online services for hairdressers. Uh, well, this week uh, my prayers were answered and for the first time in five months, I managed to get a haircut. Um, but however we're feeling uh, as we're watching this, we pray that this service might be an encouragement, might be refreshing, might be renewing, and uh, might also be thought provoking. So before we're led in some sung worship, uh, it's my privilege to lead us in prayer as we consciously enter the presence of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for all your goodness, your kindness, your mercy and your compassion. And we pray that however we're feeling this morning, wherever we're watching it from today, that you might meet with us, that we might sense again your love, your power, your touch and your hope. Holy Spirit, please come and meet with us wherever we are and however we're feeling today. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we worship this morning, we just hope that you know that God is with you just now. God loves you. His peace is there. He's with us in all things. Amen. Great 
We just thank you for who you are. That even in these living rooms and from our phones or our tellies, that you show up, God. And we are relieved that you're with us in this time. We are filled with your peace, God. And I pray that you would start changing the way that our situations look right now. Where it's tough, would you bring us into life? Turn these graves into gardens in our lives, God. I search the world But it couldn't fail me All empty praise Treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along Put me back together Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. It's our hope, it's our prayer. We sing. Lord, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing. Nothing is better than
turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. By week we've been asking different members of P's and G's church as to how they've been finding it during the lockdown and how coronavirus has impacted them and one of the areas of society that has been deeply affected by coronavirus and the economic lockdown has been the whole area of the arts and people that work in the different industries connected with the arts have had a really tough time and one member of P's and G's is Chris Lindsay. Uh, he's a scriptwriter for film and television. And we caught up with him this week to ask him some questions about how it had been for him during the lockdown and how coronavirus had affected him and his family. Chris, over to you. Hi there, my name's Chris Lindsay. I'm a member of the congregation here at P's and G's. And for my job, I work as a screenwriter. So I come up with ideas for films and television programmes and I write scripts for films and television programmes. People that know our family will know that we had a very difficult few months just before the Covid crisis kicked off. My wife, Annalene, was seven months pregnant in December and was taken very seriously ill and had to spend most of December, January and February in and out of hospital and it meant that our daughter arrived a little earlier than was ideal and uh, I'm going to take this chance just to thank our Connect group and the church in general again for the way they rallied around us and loved on us and supported us practically and spiritually in those months because they were they were tough and you were extraordinary so thank you um, but we were we were in a pretty rough way before the crisis happened um, but I was looking to return to work I'd had a lot of work that I was supposed to do through January and December January time and was hoping to be able to deliver it and then my industry completely shut down and closed down and in some ways that was a burden off because it gave me space to catch up and just allow me to be a new dad, which was lovely. But um, especially for everyone out there who's been binge watching box sets uh, on streaming services, TV is going to get pretty sparse come in the next couple of months because all the shows that should have been on in the autumn and the winter would have been filming at the height of the crisis and nothing's been filmed. It's not been safe to film, it's not been safe to make anything. And as a knock on of that, the departments that plan shows and make shows have all had to either lay their staff off or pause or shut down. And so that's been difficult, um, not knowing when the next bit of work will come. I'm freelance, I am paid project to project, and I have delivered a lot of work and handed a lot of work in now um, that I can now do nothing else about except wait for the industry to start again. And goodness me, who knows when that's going to be able to happen properly. I think in a lot of ways I was quite well placed for lockdown. I'm freelance, I'm used to working from home, my wife's freelance too, she's used to working in the house all the time, so we didn't have that adjustment, but we were raw after the hardest few months of our lives. We were worried about her health, we were worried about the baby, um, we were exhausted new parents, and we live in a very small flat, and we don't really have ready access to the outside world and we didn't have nursery anymore for our four-year-old and we'd been very reliant on support from parents uh, my parents and my wife's parents and all that went and so that was hard we, we were we were in close quarters we were tired we were had been anxious anyway i lost a friend to covid very early in the crisis uh, a friend of mine who had a an impaired immune system passed away in the early days and there was a lot of things on top of each other and you know, a lot of the time we coped well, we got our heads down, we just muddled through. Other days we got really upset and that was really hard. Um, it drove us to pray a lot more, to talk a lot more and to remember what really matters. But um, I'm sure that's been the case for a lot of people, but that came at, yeah, a lot of cost. If 
people would like to pray for our family, you could pray for us in two regards. Uh, the first would be work. Uh, as I said, I'm a freelancer. My wife's a freelancer too. She's a photographer. And as freelancers, we're depending on people needing our skills, needing our work, and there being jobs available for us to do. As I said, my industry's been paused for a long time and I've submitted now some very big pieces of work that I am now really um, dependent on other people making decisions about. And as uh, the film and television industry unpauses, if you could be praying that I would get a couple of yeses on those projects and they'd provide me with good work and good income that I can look after my family. We're a growing family. We've just had a new baby. We are probably going to need to move quite soon. And you know, obviously good work is going to be uh, really quite important to that being able to happen. Uh, the other thing is that during the a hard season we've had, we've really sensed God close to us. We have really sensed God's presence in the midst of the of the difficult times. And it's spurred us just to want to listen to God more, to be directed by God more, to make sure that we are listening to God and responding to God. So if you could be praying that we would have open ears and um, attentive hearts and brave hearts to to listen to what God's saying and to, and to follow that, then that would be wonderful. Thank you. So as Chris has asked us to pray for him, uh, I'm going to lead us in prayer for him, his family and those that work amongst the arts, and then also lead us in prayer for different areas in our world and our city and our church. The words will appear on the screen and when I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you can reply, hear our prayer. So let's pray together. Father, we pray for Chris, Annaline and their family and all those who work in the arts. We thank you for all the ways that music, literature, photography and art inspires and enriches our lives and faith. We recognise the effects of the lockdown on all the performing arts as theatres, cinemas, studios, galleries and production companies have closed and concerts, festivals and plays are cancelled. We recognise the vast number of people who work in these industries from musicians to actors, from writers to stage managers, from backstage to front of house. Please grant all those who depend on the arts for their living, peace, hope and faith, as their income is uncertain and the future unpredictable. We pray for their mental health and relationships, that you would keep them secure in your love. In particular, we pray for the Lindsays, for work, for discussions on the different projects that Chris has put forward, and that you might give them those open ears and attentive and brave hearts as you lead and direct them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who face an uncertain economic future as a result of the lockdown, for those whose jobs are in doubt, for those in industry and politics who'll be making difficult decisions in the next few weeks. Again, Father, we pray for the most vulnerable in our society, whose income is threadbare and basic. Please help us to remember the lessons that we've learned during the lockdown, the increase in neighbourliness, love and compassion, the demonstrations of practical love and service, and protect the poor in our own nation and the most vulnerable around the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who work in the NHS and care homes. We thank you for their love and hard work over the last four months. But as coronavirus drops down the news headlines, please give them rest and refreshment as they begin to recover from all that they've experienced during this crisis. Grant rest and renewed strength, particularly in their mental health, a staff process all that they have seen and done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, as the lockdown continues to ease and different aspects of life begin to return to some level of normality, please be with those who will feel very anxious for the Scottish and UK governments as they continue to balance different pressures, demands and expectations for those whose health still leaves them feeling vulnerable, for parents, pupils and teachers as they prepare for the new academic school year, uncertain as to what will be possible. And for the church, including P's and G's, as we think how we might meet together safely while continuing to serve God and our neighbours. Though we remain scattered, help us to know that we are still one in you 
and preserve our unity as we respond to the changes that will continue to surprise and frustrate all of us in different ways at different times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we join together in the Lord's Prayer, the prayer of the kingdom, the prayer of God's family. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. This morning we continue our series looking at the first letter of Peter. And it's great this morning to have Ailey Proudfoot preaching for us. Uh, Ailey is the Scotland lead for a charity called Home for Good, uh, which is working in the whole area of adoption and vulnerable children. And the charity works to encourage particularly people in the church as to how we might respond uh, to the needs of children in care and those children that are vulnerable within the UK. So Max is going to read this morning's passage for us from 1 Peter and after that Ailey is going to preach for us. The reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 11 to 17. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honour the Emperor. Good morning. It will be helpful if you have a Bible to hand as we continue our studies in the book of First Peter. First Peter was written by Peter, who was one of Jesus's closest friends and a disciple. He's writing to Christians who are scattered throughout the area of Asia Minor, which is a region we would know of as Turkey today, and it's around 30 years after the death of Jesus. He's trying to encourage these Christians to live out their faith in a world that can often be hostile to the Christian message. This world would feel really alien to them now in their new identity as Christians. And here Peter is comparing them to exiles. We see that in verse 11. We hear about exiles in the Bible back in the Old Testament uh, when it talks about the Israelites losing their land. They were God's chosen people and yet they were in exile in a foreign place. But there was a story of redemption at work since Genesis of bringing these exiles back home. And Peter here is pulling all Christians into this story and we're included in that. After four months of being apart, of being unable to physically meet together, we know something of what these believers are experiencing as they were scattered across the region. Peter calls them foreigners and exiles, which makes sense when we glance back just a couple of verses to verse 9, where Peter is showing them, and us, who they are in Christ. He says, We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, being called from darkness to light. We're different. Even if we've never travelled to foreign lands, we all know how it feels to be different to perhaps feel like we don't fit in. As we entered lockdown way back in March, we were taking our directions from Prime Minister Boris Johnson and First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. And there was one briefing that I remember in particular given by Nicola Sturgeon. 
and it painted a picture of what our lives would look like in the days and weeks ahead. It made my heart sink to think about it. She says this, life shouldn't feel normal right now. So if your life still feels entirely normal, ask yourself if you are doing the right things. If Jesus lives in us, things should not feel normal. Jesus is our new normal and he wants to transform us. Unlike the new normal of lockdown, which made our worlds very small for a few months, God's new normal for us is expansive and wide and free. Peter reminds us of that in verse 16. Live as free people. Dallas Willard, in his book Renovation of the Heart, writes this. When our heart comes to new life in God, the old programmes are still running, contrary to our new heart. My identity before God has been shifted over to another life that is also now in me as God's gift. There is who we used to be, and there is who God is making us into. We've been changed from the inside because God lives in us and is working in us. But these old programmes that Willard talks about, they still persist. The book is so challenging because it says that God is looking to transform not just our actions, but our hearts as well. And Peter is urging us to make space for God's transforming work in our lives. And he suggests three things, abstaining, living good lives and submitting. Peter has called Christians firstly to abstain in verse 11, to distance ourselves from sinful desires. We might have ideas in mind about what these sinful desires could be. They'll often be headline grabbing things like money, status, sex, substance abuse, things that would maybe make a bold headline. However, sinful desires can refer to all of human nature that is apart from God. So we could add jealousy, anger, selfishness, greed, and a whole raft of other human characteristics to this list. Perhaps we can all think of a time when we've battled with willpower. We've tried to quit a bad habit. Drink less coffee, use the car less, no more chocolate. Abstaining is not easy. And Paul, who was another of Jesus' followers, he writes in Romans chapter 7. He describes his struggle to live this new life. I do not understand what I do, he writes. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. We struggle to do what we want to do, to live free in this new life with God. We end up doing the things we don't want to be doing anymore. Why this struggle? Why can we not just decide that we're going to be holy and have no more sinful desires? Well, Matthew says in chapter 26 that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit versus the flesh. There's a war going on inside of us. Those old ways that Dallas Willard wrote about are still trying to run our new hearts and they can creep back into our lives in very subtle ways. If the flesh is weak, sometimes the best approach is to distance ourselves, to abstain as Peter is advising. A few years ago, I decided to stop buying magazines. Now I realised that magazines would not be up there on the top 10 most sinful desires list. Um, however, I found that they were feeding my heart with messages about my appearance, my diet, my home, my relationships that were just unhelpful. They always left me feeling like I didn't have enough or that I didn't look quite right. And these ideals were slowly filling more of my heart space. So I stopped buying them. Now we all have choices to make about what we feed our hearts and our minds with. Magazines for me might be something else for you. As God fills our lives with his Holy Spirit, there is less space for the temporary baggage this world wants to weigh us down with. Abstaining. Secondly, at the start of verse 12, Peter is asking us to live good lives. 
I wonder how many of us have been sucked in at times to buy products because we've seen a celebrity endorse them. Perhaps we drink Nespresso coffee like George Clooney or use L'Oreal products like Beyonce or we might be rocking the latest sporting label like Andy Murray because we want to try and up our game. Celebrity endorsement is expensive for companies to do and they spend a lot of money getting these celebrities to endorse their products because it's powerful. It makes us buy. We see something attractive in these celebrities and we want something of it. When Peter encourages us to do good, the word he's using does not just mean in terms of quality. It also means fine, attractive, winsome. When people look at our lives, what do they see us endorsing? We all endorse something, be it our values, our beliefs, our choices, even the products that we buy. Like us, these Christians were out there in the world doing whatever God had given them to do. And God wants us to live our lives out there in the world doing what he has given us to do amongst the people he has given us. Let your light shine before others, Matthew says in chapter 5, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Are we endorsements for our Father in heaven? Are we living lives that show us to be God's free people? Lastly, in verse 13, submitting to human authority. The emperors that Peter speaks of here were known for their tyrannical rule. He is well aware that human authority can be used in abusive ways. And yet he seems to be telling us to just put up and submit. The Bible, however, presents a powerful and sustained attack on the abuse of power by human authorities. Submitting to authority, it's not a negative, passive thing. God has designed us to live in societal structures rather than anarchy. And looking back on these past few months, it seems surreal that we all stayed home and followed government guidelines. Our latest example of submission is perhaps the face masks we're being asked to wear. Whatever our view of them, we wear them because we submit to the authority of our country. We want to reassure others, our fellow citizens, that we are making an effort and playing our part in keeping everyone safe. The early church was under fire with lots of slanderous things being said about Christians. And while Christians today can be seen as judgmental or bigoted, recent research by Transform Scotland has shown that 54% so more than half the population of Scotland have a positive view of Christianity. Verse 15 tells us it is by doing good we silence the ignorant talk. It's true, isn't it, what they say, that actions sometimes can speak louder than words. And in these past four months in Edinburgh alone, we've seen Bethany, Cap Money, Safe Families, Edinburgh City Mission, to name just a few, all actively doing good throughout this city. Some have said the church is closed, and yet we have seen the church provide meals, pastoral care, prayer ministry, resources for children, and much more. This strange season has been a real opportunity for Christians to be a blessing where they've been placed, for their actions to speak. Shopping for relatives, delivering meals, setting up WhatsApp group for neighbours, even organising the dreaded family quizzes. These are all examples of living peaceful, wise and good lives. It's part of the picture Peter is painting here for us on what submission is. But so also is keeping up with, trying to keep up with, and engaging with our country's politics, with the democracy that we have, by abiding with the laws of the country and using the systems that we have been placed in. It's also good and right for us to speak up for oppression and injustice whenever we see it. So, 
abstaining, living good lives and submitting. This morning, if we feel like we don't fit in, in this world as it hurtles towards its new normal, if we still feel like a foreigner or an exile, we can be assured that this is how it's meant to be for us as Christians. Ecclesiastes 3 in verse 11 says that God has placed eternity in the hearts of the human race. We long for more. We were made for more. One commentator describes us as exiles of eternity, and I really like that. As we live in and journey through this world, we lift our heads and turn our gaze towards God and his eternal kingdom. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Christ 
Christ is risen. Oh, come, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross till you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. So let's pray together in response to what God has said to us through Ailey this morning. Father, we do pray that you might help us to make wise decisions that as we seek to abstain from those things that harm us, to live well for you, and then also to submit to the authorities that you've put over us, but ultimately to you. Father, please give us wisdom and discernment. As we think about those habits, those patterns of thought and speech and life, that perhaps we need to refrain from, that damage ourselves, that damage other people, that damage our planet, that fundamentally harm you, then we pray, Father, for your Spirit's help, that we might abstain and refrain from those things that hurt us and other people. Pour out your Holy Spirit into our lives. And as we seek to live lives that are full of salt and flavour and light, that influence our society and our culture for the good, then again, pour out your Holy Spirit into our lives, that the lives that we live might show that we belong to you, that our allegiance is to your kingdom. And Father, as we seek to submit to those that you have put in authority over us, as we seek to submit ultimately to each other, to put each other's needs first, as we seek ultimately to submit to your lordship, to your rule over our lives. May we know your peace, may we know your courage, may we know your hope and your faith, and may we know your power to make good choices in the choices that we choose to make this week, in how we speak, in how we think, in how we live, that we might honour you, in Jesus' name. Amen. In the darkness. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word. From a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Despise the cross, for even in your 
you're suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. Till that stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And And the the dead dead rose from their tombs tombs, And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To to the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not faint, shall not kneel. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. So it's been lovely to worship with you today from wherever you've been watching us. Um, Just one final thing to remind you of, if you have received our online survey uh, where we're asking people as to how we can help and also how uh, we might move forward together uh, as a church, then if you haven't filled it in yet, then please do so. Um, If you make a request for a particular kind of pastoral support or practical help uh, as you fill the survey in. Uh, Just a reminder to fill both your uh, first and second name in and your contact details. Uh, We have had one or two people filling in the survey uh, asking requests, but they simply put their first name or left the surveys anonymous. uh, So we can't actually respond to those requests. So if you haven't done already, please fill the survey in. If you can do it by the end of Sunday today, uh, that would help uh, because our pandemic management team were meeting this week and uh, the results of the survey will shape our thinking and our planning uh, for how we meet together as a church over the next few weeks and months. But it's been great to worship with you and to receive from God with you. And uh, it's my privilege that as we think about going back into this new week for all that it will entail for each of us, then it's my privilege to pray for God's blessing uh, over you this morning. So may God the Father, who rescued Jesus again from the dead, rescue you this week from sin, from darkness, and may he lead you into his light. May Jesus, who gave up his life for you, 
May you know his hope and his life working in you. May you know the incredible value that he places upon you. And may you know the power of the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead when he was dead in the tomb. May you know that same power that raised Jesus from the dead at work in you this week. And so may the blessing of Father, Son and Holy Spirit sustain you, give you strength, give you power, give you comfort and give you hope. And may the blessing of God rest upon you and those whom you love and pray for this week. In the name of Christ. Amen.